Packers at Bears, Monday night football. Marco, what should batters be looking at? Battle of unbeatens, but boy, one of them we didn't expect to be here, that's for sure. No doubt, no doubt. Though Chicago did have the easy game in week one, big upset at Dallas last week. So what should batters be looking at? I'm going to be looking here for value, and I think that on this game, although my projection is going to be pretty close to the number, I think there's still some value on the Screen Bay side. Green Bay is a team that was my pick for a future bet to go to the Super Bowl this year. I think they're to the win the Super Bowl. Go to the Super Bowl. To the Super Bowl. Um, they're the best team in the NFC, in my opinion. Now they suffered a you know a devastating loss, but you know see how they go with Grant. You know the running back. You know it's nice to have that quality back to help Aaron Rodgers with, uh, you know, that they're not pinning their ears coming at him. But there's no question, Aaron Rodgers is the key to the Green Bay Packers. He's having a good season, great season so far. And the Chicago Bears, I think, you know, the public difference of two weeks, week one, everybody was screaming they were lucky to win against the Detroit Lions that play at the end of the game. And now last week they go in the road and win at Dallas. So now people you know, in a matter of a week, we're going to say, well, maybe they're not that bad. A lot of people talking about, you know, Marks is there with the offensive coordinator. All right, so let, let's look at the number. Is with Green Bay, it opened three and a half, and it's moved down to three. So you would have to think, and, and that move really surprises me. You would have to very much, because remember, whenever early week moves are sharp moves, mm -hmm. there's two types of sharp moves. There's the true positions, and there's getting ahead of a public move that, that Sharps expect. No one's thinking, oh, the public can't wait to bet the Bears here. So it would seem to me this is a legitimate sharp move on the Bears, enough to get them, uh, you know, get off a three and a half to three. You got to take that pretty serious. I mean, to me, of all the handicapping factors, that's number one to me is a legitimate sharp move on the home dog here. I will agree with you being early in the week. I will point out one thing that John Q. Public is going to look at. Um, you've had two Monday night games already. You've had the home dog cover both of them. You had Kansas City beat San Diego, and you had San Francisco beat the Super not beat, but cover against the Super Bowl champs. So, you know, we always talked that back in the day, I mean, that was an automatic, no-brainer. Yeah. You had a Monday night home dog, you, you sent it with both hands. So the, the, the guys who lost with the road favorites, the guys that won with the home dogs, are going to be really inclined to, to, to value that home dog situation more than they did uh, even early in the year. All right, so that might speak to the fact that the public might be less inclined to play Green Bay than, than we might think in general, but it doesn't change. It's certainly not going to, like, you wouldn't think, you might think, wow, Green Bay was going to be 80% of the money. Now they might be 50%, and it's going to be surprising because that split's driven by the home dog being 2-0. and But Lordy B, no one's thinking when they see that 3.5 open, this thing's going down to 1. i got to get ahead of this. Mm -hmm. I, I think we can agree the Sharps really do like the Bears here. So as you look at the handicap, why would that be? As I look at some of my notes, Bears are 7-18 and 18 ATS versus winning teams. This is a team that in the recent past just hasn't been able to match up against the best teams. The Packers have covered four straight in this matchup. So they beat the Bears and covered. Uh, I'm not sure if they won all those games straight up, but they've covered four straight games. So everything I'm seeing is, yeah, this Green Bay team's become a media darling, but now that it's down to three, I'm not sure that there's really a great premium on them. My gut feeling is I like Green Bay. Uh, can, you make a, can you make a strong case for Chicago? Because the Sharps certainly have put their money where their mouth is. I have Green Bay 24-20. So I'm all right, like so official projection. 24-20. One thing that I'll point out is right now, again, I, I alluded to it at the beginning, the fact that they beat Dallas, the stock is rising on Chicago. We know that, Chicago, that Dallas is one of those public teams, so everybody's going to react or overreact more when there's something involving Dallas. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the fact that they beat them just magnifies that win. The last three games between Green Bay and Chicago have been decided by seven points or less. That means it's come down to one possession. So you've got a home dog, you know, that 
really, if you look at the last three games, look at the history, they do look like a live home dog. And now maybe people are going to start to buy into the, you know, Mike Marks system, you know, that he's brought to San, to Chicago. I mean, Jay Cutler was 21 of 29 last week against Dallas for 270. And you think about it, this, this hate of Cutler, this hate of the Bears, really didn't happen until a quarter or a third of the way through last season. Entering the season, people thought Denver was held up by Chicago in that trade and that, that Chicago got the best of it. Now Cutler is, is like this poster child for a bad quarterback. That clearly wasn't the perception until his horrible year last year. Perhaps his performance against Dallas has shown that was the fluke, the bad year last year, and he really is that quarterback that, that people thought he was in Denver. I mean, when they made the trade for him, they said he was the missing link. I mean, that's the one thing that the Bears were lacking when they had those decent teams the last few years was they didn't have consistent quarterback. Play. You know, we talk about the motivation. I just can't help but think Green Bay is going to look at this as the coming out party of, yes, we are a Super Bowl contender, one of the best teams in the NFC, and we're going to make, as you call it, a statement game. Any closing comments? Going to be an interesting game. Uh, you know, I love watching Aaron Rodgers. He's one of the few guys that I – like to watch if he if I have a choice between a couple games I like him because I don't like Brett Favre and I just you know I feel for the guy he was stuck in his shadow for so long all right now it's your turn to continue the conversation in the comments section with Marco and me and that's it for this week next week we'll be previewing all of the biggest games from a Las Vegas perspective